It's here. The part we have dreamed about. It's been on order for three months. <laughs> and we finally have it. <clears throat> These are definitely not the edible kind. Only one way to find out. Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> My god, it's huge. <laughs> That's big. Oh man. How heavy is it? I want to say 2.4 kilograms. Like in your hands, how heavy is that? At least five pounds. Huh? Follow us on Instagram. It's a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> On the inside here. Whoa. Who's that? Yeah. No. Uh, but since since then I've been talking to Touch. Why? He needs something to do. All right, so if you guys are new to this series, we've been attempting to fly like Iron Man for whew, almost two years now. Since 100,000 subscribers, basically what happened was when our YouTube channel was very small, we set a little goal that if we broke 100,000 subscribers, we would start this ambitious project to try and fly like Iron Man. So for our 100,000 subscriber milestone, we actually said we would try and do a project to fly like Iron Man. What? Now, obviously that is a really, really ambitious project and it's taken us a long time just to get where we are today. And the big issue obviously is funding because flying is difficult, but flying in a compact way is even more expensive. You, you can build a giant quadcopter that could lift a human for probably under $20,000. But if you wanna try and shrink that down to like a tiny jet pack, it's, the, the costs just skyrocket. So what we're trying to do is slowly build up a system and get used to flying. And we're basically going to start by building a larger version of what we hope to shrink down in the future. Now, in our earlier videos, we used what we thought were some of the largest EDFs that you could actually purchase. And these put out about eight kilograms of thrust. Thanks to one of our sponsors, we were able to buy what we now know is the largest EDF you can buy. And that's the Schubler 195 millimeter diameter EDF, and this thing puts out 24 kilograms of thrust. Now, in order to actually test this and make sure it can put out 24 kilograms of thrust, we've got this little thrust test jig that we built for our homemade EDF in an update a few videos ago. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this on here, hook up the new speed controller, which you can see is absolutely massive compared to what we are using before, and then we'll be able to spin it up and see if it actually produces that 24 kilograms of thrust. Voila. It's by your sock. It's, yeah, it's by your foot. Further? Socks and sandals on video. Socks Oof. And that's on that's video. a risky move. No. Let's see if it pays off. So now we're gonna install the new speed controller. Just a little bit bigger. Not not too much bigger. What a crappy zip tie. Think. And now for something completely different. On this episode of Make It Real, I'm going to show you how to style your hair just like Captain America.
Once your hair is nice and wet, you're gonna need an industrial hair dryer. And boom, you've got Captain America's hair. All right, so before we decide to use this in our future design, we need to test to make sure it's actually up to the manufacturer's spec. So as we've shown before, we've built a little thrust test jig with a little Arduino that's gonna keep track of how much thrust this actually produces. The other big thing we're testing here is uh, my confidence level in being anywhere near this when it's running because that is the ultimate plan to strap these to my body somehow. So let's, let's see how confident I feel. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so right now we have it set to a maximum of 30% throttle. So let's see what that's like. <laughs> Not bad. Now let's go up to a uh, full throttle. I somehow don't feel safe standing right next to it. I don't know if I feel safer like over here. So my confidence level so far is not very high. All right, so we've got the data on the Arduino from that test. Now, it sounds really impressive, but let's, let's throw some stuff into the wind stream and see what that looks like. So uh, maybe not 100%. Uh, that didn't really blow that far. Yeah, the jet engine looked a bit cooler when we were throwing balls in front of it. All right, now to visualize the flow of air that's actually going through the EDF right now, we have a little surprise. It's called a smoke grenade. Got a bit dusty in there. All right, now we've tested the jet engine and the Schubler. Well, and our homemade EDF. We can start deciding what we actually want to use for the project. Now, the most economical option would of course just be using giant props. But like we said earlier, we don't really want to go down this route because we'll just end up with basically a giant quadcopter. After giant props, the next most economical option is the jet engine. Uh, the jet engines produce about 34 kilograms of thrust and cost roughly about three to $4,000 each. They're not as precise as an EDF, which means we can't control them quite as easily, making it a bit difficult for a VTOL application. That's not to say it's not possible, it's just the design we wanna go with is gonna be self-stabilizing. Now, people have attached jet engines to themselves before and successfully hovered. But again, we want to build a platform that's intelligent and can automatically make sure the pilot is upright, which is why we really want to use EDFs. But the problem is the EDFs are really, really expensive. The Schubler produces about 24 kilograms of thrust, but it costs nearly $6,000 after import, tax, customs, and all those duties and whatnot. But at that price point for those EDFs, I mean, we'd probably need about eight of them at minimum to be able to have enough thrust weight to really be able to fly properly, you're looking at $48,000 just there, which is crazy. And it's gonna be quite a while before we could afford that many EDFs to actually build this prototype. 
So to try and reduce that cost, we did try designing our own EDF. The problem was the amount of engineering time that would have to go into the design to make it work would actually end up costing much, much more than just buying them. So we're kind of back at square one and we're not really going to pursue designing our own EDF. That being said, one of our subscribers is actually looking at designing their own 300 mil EDF. He's actually 3D scanned and upscaled a blade design from an existing EDF, modified it in CAD, 3D printed it, and then coated it in carbon fiber. And as you see, he actually sent us a sample of one of the blades he built. That's pretty awesome. So as you can see, he sent us one of the original 3D printed samples, but then what he did was he actually coated it in carbon fiber. Now carbon fiber is actually one of the few things we can't do here at Hacksmith Industries yet, but it's really awesome to see what is possible. And it's definitely something we're gonna be looking into in the future as something that we'd like to be able to do in house. Anyways, if you guys wanna see a detailed video on how this was actually made, go check out and subscribe to High Voltage Feathers on YouTube. We've put a link in the description below and there'll be a link at the end of this video. And if he has success with this project, maybe we'll be able to use his design in a future iteration of our project. But in the meantime, let's use AR technology to actually show you what our design might look like. So this is our preliminary design that we drafted up in SOLIDWORKS. As you can see, it uses four jet engines and four Schubler EDFs, and will provide a considerable amount of thrust that would allow us to fly and it would be able to self-stabilize. There we go, that's the approximate scale of the actual design. As you can see, it is pretty big, but it is a lot smaller than a giant quadcopter. Now obviously there are even smaller platforms out there. A notable one is the Flyboard Air, which is really compact and works really well. The only issue is that's a $250,000 product. If we're able to build something like this, the cost would actually be just under $60,000, which is still a lot of money, but it's not a quarter million. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know it was a rather quick update, but we thought some update was better than no update because right now we're actually super busy with some other big projects in the shop and some new equipment, which we're gonna be announcing very soon. If you guys want a hint on seeing what that is, check us out on social media. And don't forget to check out High Voltage Feathers on YouTube right there. Plus we'll be testing this soon.